What? He can't make it? Are you serious? Well, I'll find someone here. I'll find someone. Hey, hey. Come on, come on, come on. You got what? your Bible. Here, come on. Uh, my Bible? What? How would you like to be on a TV show? Uh, well, the Basement Boys. Not... It's a Bible. You've got a Bible. Uh-huh. You, you, what are you listening to? Uh, I'm listening to uh, Tim Keller. Tim Keller. Oh, the Preacher yeah. Manhattan. There you go. Perfect. Okay. You will be excellent for this. you got a Bible. It's the leather one. You're serious. Uh -huh. Come on in. We want to, uh, that, want to introduce is you. Is that camera on? What's your name? Uh, Andy. 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 Yeah, nice uh, to meet you, Andy. Come on down. You'll see. It's, it's okay. a nice little setup uh -huh. here. we got some banana bread. It'll be great. Uh, so, uh, it's tasteful, I hope. Yeah, oh, it's very tasteful. We are okay. very committed to. So, yeah, just right, grab a seat right. here, you know. Hey, and uh, Wait, there you go. Name? What's his name? Um, this is Andy. Andy. This is Andy. Yeah, Hi, Andy. 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 It's Andy. Andy. This is Andy, okay, and you want to meet Mike? Okay, uh, good. Mike? Oh, okay. All right, good. Okay, uh, well, we'll be on in about one or two minutes. Powder right. your nose, okay? And then uh, uh, we'll go. And you'll see. You'll see. Just roll with it. Okay? All right. It's, 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 just roll so with early, it. I hope to sleep. Welcome to uh, another uh, webisode, a uh, bibli episode, yeah. bibli so whatever you want to call these things that we've been doing. Um, we're excited. This is uh, the introduction and the setup to the New Testament unit, specifically the Gospels unit. When we say Gospels, what do you think? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. What other What other things Miracles. do you think? Miracles. Okay. Disciples. Um, uh, well, we'll ask our guy. We've got a guest star coming in here in a minute, and uh, maybe we can ask him what you know what the word means and you know what he thinks of so on. Uh, let's welcome Andy. Come on in, Andy. Yeah. Oh, Andy. All right, Andy. Good morning. Hey, good Mike morning. And Mike. Mike. Yeah. So yes, Mike and Mike, Mike in the Mike morning. morning. It is the morning. morning. That's the way we got. You know, we're mm -hmm. not the usual Pepsi's yeah. and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about your credentials, your experiences. What are uh, what have you been up to? Well, I'm a, a recent uh, graduate of higher education, uh, Ooh, where I was. We will not name the institution. No, no, it's better not to. Okay. But I was pursuing uh, a program in religious studies, um, so I'm now walking away with a certificate. Uh, oh, nice, impressive. Yeah, is it? I mean, do you have it with you? Uh, no, I have it in my other pair of pants. Okay, well, let's. Uh, okay, so um, biblical studies. Mm -hmm. Have you? I know you did some travel. That's true. I uh, I spent some time over in Israel uh, a few months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, a few highlights, maybe something that you thought was that was really interesting about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. We visited uh, quite a few historic sites. Um, you know, stuff. Are they all? <laughs> you know, <laughs> some more sure. than others. You know, they're all. What do you mean? History. I mean, okay, never mind. Okay, let's not I'm, debate about you know what history means. So. You've been to the Holy Lands, and so did, did it help you think about the Gospels in a new way? You know, uh, did you think, it's wow, certainly Peter? That's the lake Peter walked across the water. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, it certainly really uh, brings things to life. Um, you know, when you're walking through the desert uh, and you know you're just under the heat, like it's really intense. Um, and so you can really appreciate, like, when the psalmist is talking about like resting in the shade of you know the rock, and you know. Um, it really brings things to life, and so you know, hanging out by the Sea of Galilee, stuff like that. It, it uh, really so it really floats. I mean, things really yeah. float. 
In uh, it? Was in that the Dead, Dead Sea? Dead Sea, yeah. Oh, I, I was there too. Was there. I don't have the certificate. That's true. Yeah. He's we had that. such an early age. So I know. Yeah, I'm amazed. Impressive. He doesn't even have like a beard yet. No, that's crazy. Uh, so, um, so this is where we're going to be talking about. If I say gospel, what do you think? Gospel. Um, I think the good news. Okay, the good news. So mm -hmm. if we say the gospels, we're saying they're the good newses? The golf. Right. The good. Hmm. There's only one good news, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's four people that tell the good news, the same good news. Right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So that's going to be the focus of where we're going. So, uh, yeah, so let's take a break a second and we'll uh, we'll look into this and uh, everybody's good. Okay? So. All right, Mike, uh, you got a lot of friends. I do. Uh, and uh, if on the rare occasion you should happen to somehow be talking about the Bible or Jesus or God, mm -hmm. um, what kind of things do you think concerns or comments that they might have about, you know, these Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and down these, they got Christ in the accounts. What kind of things might, you know, be troubling to them, perhaps? Okay. Well, a lot of people say, like, it's so old and that uh, the things that are written in there back it was such a t long time ago that now it doesn't have any value for us and there's no reason that we should even look mm -hmm. at it. It's so old. Also, I think it's like a... It's a fairy tale, and it's all like weird with that. He resurrected and did all these things. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, just, they, just too that's strange. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. They, so that's like one couple things that they have concerns with about it, and why they don't always like look into it mm -hmm. or think about it. You know. So do you think just a random question? Uh, just shooting off the hip here, like I always do. You know, do do you think most of those people that have those crazy thoughts have ever actually read it for themselves? Um, most of them probably not. Okay. They just. They don't think it'd be a, worth the time to yeah. even look at it. So it's more like they maybe kind of heard about it. So they, they, they wasn't necessarily, like, I read it and... Now I think this. They yeah. just think about like, well, yeah. I heard someone say this and yeah. I just think... That makes sense. Yeah. Well, listen, if, if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell the story of the life of Christ uh, and they are eyewitnesses or they, in Luke's case, maybe recorded eyewitnesses, we're not sure which the case was, about Christ, his teaching, his miracles, and all these things... Um, we need to make sure then they're trustworthy eyewitnesses and what they wrote down. There is this kind of conspiracy theory that, like, that they made the whole thing up, you know, the resurrection and then because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written down after the resurrection. Not long after, but they were written after. They weren't writing as they went because they didn't know how it was all going to happen, right? But they had to, there was a strong oral tradition where accuracy, verbal accuracy, really matters a lot. Like today, we don't have that so much that if we don't record or tape it, we wouldn't trust it getting it right, but they really work very hard. So, so when they quote somebody and this happened and they make it, that they could have held it very accurately for, for a long time. So even if it was written you know, 10, 15, 20 years after it happened, there's still some trustworthiness there in terms of uh, how they looked at things. Well, Andy was so talking question, about how the, the New Testament is very true because there are so many ancient manuscripts that are written, so many documents and stuff that it's, it'd be really hard to debunk that since there are so many copies and stuff floating around that no one could really tell and say that these were untrue. So, you know. Well, let's go to the chart. Ancient manuscripts, how many? Well, as you can see here, Plateau it's had, oh, Pl Plato had seven, Kaiser yeah. had ten. It's Caesar, Caesar. Uh, okay, L Livy had 20. Aristotle had uh, 49. Aristotle, for those of you that are actually listening. <laughs> Sophocles uh, had 100. Sophocles. Had, a, had 193. And this is, this is the surprise. Homer Simpson had 643. It's just Homer. It's just Homer, not Homer Simpson. Wait a minute. Homer's got 643? Homer. So where's the New Testament? It's, it's off the charts. Off what? The it's charts. probably like. Where, well, wait a minute. Where do we go? Can you can you does it, can you talk, make the magic box show us how many? Does it go up or down? Is it yeah? Help us here. Sorry, Sorry about that, that, folks. We were on Mel Carta WordPress, and Garrett found the wrong site, and he just got it screwed up again. And no surprises there. He didn't find what we needed for the New Testament manuscripts, but. On this site, what we found is that it said that there's approximately about 24,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. Wow! Which, Gary, would you like to tell them how big that would be? Or that would be about 34 times the size of this chart. So, 
It's probably this blue tape here. If we had to go from the ceiling all the way down to the ground, it'd be about how about many? 34 times. It'd be about 34 times. So as you can see, there's a major difference in between the t in between all of them. That is a lot of manuscripts. 24,000. So Don't we are not crazy for having confidence. No. So the question is though, conspiracy, did they have reason? Were they inventing something new? Were they making something up uh, as a few people have alleged? Does it hold together? So we need to know about the reliability of these documents. Um, and so Andy, tell us, uh, tell us some things you know. Give us your top 10 list of yeah. reasons, you know, to trust okay. these writings okay. and therefore the material in them. Yeah, you know, starting with what you're talking about, Mike, um, just people kind of accusing the Gospels of being too far removed from any kind of historical, you know, setting and um, them being more like a legend than anything else. Um, we know, in fact, that that's just not the case. Uh, we have plenty of examples of legend from that time, and the Gospels just don't fit the literary type. Uh, if you compare it to other literary genres, uh, you find that the Gospels are written in Greco-Roman biography, which is completely different from what, what, what's a Greco what's a Greco Roman <laughs> ramen? Right, it's it's a particular Roman. Roman what what's it? Yeah, ramen noodles. Uh, no, it's a Greco Roman biography, which is written um, as a, a particular historical uh, literary style, and uh, it differs from legendary writing. Uh, so, if anyone is familiar with you know ancient texts, you find that they. Uh, they vary significantly, and uh, you know, if you are familiar with it, you would never mistake the two. Uh, and so, right. a lot of that, a lot of what follows in, in this discussion, kind of stems from that. Okay. That so different animals, you know. So tell us about, you know, right off the bat, um, there's something strange about it. Um, if if you have an accident or you do something dumb or blunder, and you're writing about it yourself, yeah. Your tendency is going to be to soft sell yourself a little bit, right? If you do something really, really foolish, you kind of uh -huh. you were to write it. Tell us what happened. You you might not make yourself out to be so horrible, right? Yeah, and you know that's just not the case at all. What we find in uh, in the Gospels and uh, each of them is that there are just some embarrassing, awkward moments, um, and they're really hard to grapple with if you have the hypothesis that these have been written, you know, as some sort of uh, you know planned uh, early church conspiracy. I mean. A lot of the stories are really difficult to figure out why he would write unless they're fact. Uh, you know, can you guys think of any examples um, of this? Peter, why? I mean, if he had any say in what gets written, why would he want him betraying Jesus yes. or True. starting to lose faith and just going down in the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. You know, yeah. that's, that's a couple right off the top. Yeah, and another one that uh, that comes up a lot is uh, just women in the in the New Testament. Um, the fact that. They're the ones who first discover the empty tomb. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a huge that's right. liability for the early church because everybody course, knows a man doesn't take directions well, right? <laughs> well, it's it's even more than you know that part. It's that in the first century Jewish context, uh, women were really considered tail bearers, and they weren't uh, even allowed to testify in court because they uh, they were considered gossips. Tail bearers, T T A L E. I thought for a second yeah, that yeah, you were saying that women had tails. I mean, did that throw you? Tears, that threw yeah. me a minute because I was just you know, stuck with like tail bears. I'm, that's I'm sorry. That was I'm just not me. familiar was with that, that scholarship. Yeah, okay. A little bit. Okay, tail storytellers. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's that's right. Okay. So. Okay. That's a big one. What about uh, in terms of content? Um, yeah. Jesus said some things that he does. were. Jesus said some really challenging things in the Gospels that if you're writing them from a later date and you're trying to make everything square, it's pretty challenging because some of the things he says um, are just hard sayings. That, like, for example? Um, for example, when he's... Yeah, it's bad, you know, it's hard for a rich man to get through the eye of a camel. Something like, <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's camel through the eye of a needle. It's hard for right. a rich it's man to get man the to camel have, through no, the no, eye no, of a needle. No, no, no. Mike, it's, are we it's putting the camel for, through the eye of the needle? It's harder or the for rich a rich man, man to get into the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to go yes, through the eye of a yes, needle. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then I heard, but I heard like, well, the eye of the needle was just a gate, and you know, they kind of. Well, or is it, or is it really? Did he meet? Oh, there's debate. Okay, well, you know, another another great example that requires a lot less confusion uh, is when Jesus goes to pray uh, before he's going to be taken um, 
he he asks God to let the cup pass from him in Gethsemane. Mm. And those are just some really challenging things. You know, if Jesus is who we, we say he is, then it seems a little bit complex, you know? It's not exactly straightforward stuff. So, if you wanted to write a hero, he would not right. be like, I don't, he wouldn't say, I don't want to do this thing. Exactly. Like, he's probably going to, like, slash through, like, a whole army of guys, yeah, and then, I don't know, maybe... Yeah. I but he wouldn't to, say, I don't want to, this is horribly difficult, I don't want to right. do it. That's good, that's a good point. Exactly. Hard teachings like, love your enemies. He's a very human yes. He, he did some counter teachings, the Sermon on the Mount. He said, all of you understand this, but I'm saying, er, like, completely this other way. Mm -hmm. You're keeping the law, and I'm saying you're missing the whole spirit of it, and you're, you know, so you're very contrarian. So you're yeah. right, yeah, that makes sense that it, that... You wouldn't. You might not. You might be inclined to not put those things in if you were going back and writing it. And mm -hmm. what, you know, you'd say, ah, skip that part about. No one's going to get that, right? Exactly. I would have been tempted to leave that on the side of the road. Okay. But, what else you got? What other? Well, um, yeah. You know, uh, keeping kind of in line with all that. Um, you know, Jesus just kind of subverts a lot of people's expectations for what they're expecting uh, is going to happen when the Messiah comes. Okay. What's the Messiah, Mike? It's. A person. Person? Okay. That it's kind of like a ruler from their perception of what they thought it would be. He was a ruler, kind of. And he would have a strong role, in court, sort of be like a king for them. And Would you say that the Messiah was kind of a savior? Yeah, it'd be like, he'd help okay. them out and uh, right. help them get through the things that they're going to be facing. Mm -hmm. So, if you're the Jews and Rome is squashing you, Yes. Like a large person, like squashing. wrestling, yeah, squashing, squashing you. Rabbit. Yeah, like a rabbit, whatever. Yeah. Then... Like you, you would want someone bigger or stronger to come along and throw off the me out of the rabbit, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay, forget that analogy, it doesn't yeah, work. But the idea that they want they want someone to, you know, come and help them, and yeah. just make them feel safe. And <clears throat> bring the wrath of God, God, right? Yeah, that, they have, that they have someone that's under And that's exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, in, the, in the first century, um, Judaism is really split into a lot of different schools of thought, but... Um, Pretty much all of them are expecting that the Messiah is going to come and be very much military ruler, uh, and that he's going to overthrow the you know the Roman yoke that uh, mm -hmm. they are occupying all of Israel. And so Jesus comes and he he comes as a servant and uh, you know isn't calling for the overthrow of Rome. This is some pretty controversial stuff, and a lot of people have a hard time with that. Why is he washing feet? That doesn't yeah. right. That's a humiliating job. Mm -hmm. You know why did he let himself be Crucified, like, just right. all the, yeah, a lot of things. Okay, well, yeah. what other what other reasons was we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Because see, some people are real, some of us are very familiar. We've read them so many times, we stop noticing some of these things that make them very unique. Yeah. So, uh, can you give us another well, reason? We have some other good evidence. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the the historical finds and just some of the uh, archaeology done, there's a lot of good supporting evidence out there. Uh, that can can verify uh, stuff in this book. Um, there, uh, there are people that uh, there there was no record of a lot of these guys, and so you know some people if they're very cynical they could say you know everyone in the book is made up, uh, but that's just not the case. Um, we have examples uh, of Pontius Pilate. Uh, we also have uh, evidence of. Um, Simon of Cyrene's ossuary, his uh, his funeral bone box, basically, mm -hmm. um, and so there are just you know multiple examples um, where we know that these people lived uh, mm -hmm. and they were uh, where the Bible says they were. Okay, yeah. So some historical people being written about yeah. bring some verification mm -hmm. that it wasn't once upon a time in a land far, far away, but you know that there really was a procurator here and. Yeah, uh, that, it, that it holds. Okay. And so, you know, we're Nick, the... you're gathered around the mini magic box. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, he was talking, Mike was talking about, you know, the whole soccer incident and, and embellishing how you might unembellish the stories. And Andy was talking about, you know, the documents and how the New Testament writers wrote. Tell us some things about it that your magic box has taught you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, embellishing and extravagant details are strong signs that a historical account has legendary elements. I mean, for example, there's a legendary account of Christ's resurrection that was written in more than a hundred years after the actual event. What's that from? It was from the apoc apocryphal forgery known as the Gospel of Peter. Mm. And it, kind of, it goes like this. 
Early in the morning, as the Sabbath dawned, there came a large crowd from Jerusalem and the, and the surrounding areas to see the sealed tomb. But during the night before the Lord's day dawned, as the soldiers were keeping guard two by two in every watch, there came a great sound in the sky. And they saw the heavens open and two men descended, shining with a great light, and they drew near to the tomb. The stone which had been set on the door rolled away by itself and moved to one side. And the tomb was opened, both, and both of the young men went in. Now, that, now when the soldiers saw that, they woke up the sentry and the elders, for they were also keeping watch. While they were not telling them the things that they, which they had seen, they saw three men com come out of the tomb. Two of them were sustaining the other one, and a cross following after them. The heads of the two, they a saw... Wait, did you see a cross following after yeah. them? Yeah. I guess floating, not... Okay, back. okay. I'm just trying to stay with the story. The, the heads of the two they saw had heads that reached up to the heaven. What? They had heads that went to the heavens, like long... Alien heads? I'm assuming, that's what I'm getting from this. But the head of him that was led by them went beyond the heaven. And they heard a voice out of the heaven saying, Have you preached unto them that sleep? The answer that was heard from the cross was, Yes. The cross talked? Did that cross just talk? It sounded yeah, like the cross just talked, didn't it? The, the cross talked. Okay. That's a website, Crosstalk, but, you know. So that's how I would have written it if I were making up, like, embellishing or res a res a resurrection story. We saw large crowds, moving stones, heads of men stretching to heaven and beyond. And when we see a walking and talking cross, how exciting, how embellished. The New Testament resurrection contains nothing like this. Uh, the Gospel gives, matter of fact, almost bland descriptions of the resurrection. So... Very early on in the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on the, their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young, a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. Gal Galilee. There, you, there you will see him as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Afraid people, bewildered, confused, pretty simple, pretty clean, right? No floating heads, no talking crosses. Weird. It's not quite as zippy, but you know, seems more truthful. Yeah. Huh? Beautiful. So, Thanks. You know, we've, got the, we've got the witness and kind of the testimony of these guys, you know, thousands of years after they've been dead, but an interesting one is just even in the Bible, uh, when these guys were living, uh, you have to keep in mind that this stuff happened, you know, just years after uh, the events that they describe. And so there are a lot of people in the, in the Bible who were actually alive at the time. Uh, and in fact, the Bible, uh, the authors often say, you know, go back and talk to those guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Confirm so, you know, it, yeah. Bible I was looking here at yeah. one of the considered perhaps the earliest written testimony about the resurrection of Christ. Of course, we've talked about that Christ's resurrection, everything hangs on it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he was, was a man, had some teachings, but he claimed to be God. And so this early church hymn or thing he said, I, I received, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, and he goes on, but he says, and then to the twelve, after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, uh, most of whom are still living, although some have fallen asleep, which means also dead. Uh, then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me, talking about Paul. And so there's this, there he said, basically that's Paul's way of saying, go ahead. They're still around, they're still living. If you don't, you know, if you don't believe it, go ask them. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty daunting thing. You gotta be pretty confident about, if you're making a story up, to challenge people to go out and ask everybody. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? That's usually, that's not how it goes if you're trying to create a deception or, or something that's, you know, uh, not, not fully true, you know, or mm -hmm. kind of half true. It wouldn't hold up, because people could, if it didn't happen, how could he have said these things? This is Basement City. Uh, we've just a small city in the basement. 
Uh, we have a construction zone where they're repairing the roads. Uh, and we have you know, four people out for their daily activities. We have Mark just going for a little stroll. Uh, John's at McDonald's getting a nice cheeseburger. Uh, Matthew's just chilling out on the corner and uh, he's going through the drive-thru. So, Mike, anything else? Say about um, the as you can see, it's just, there's a little construction here, so you know, that just alludes to how much of the normal city this is and the possibilities of what could possibly happen. Attention ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain, Jimmy Kirk speaking. We are nearing Basement City. We are approximately five minutes from landing. Uh, Please put your tray tables up and your seat back in the full upright position as we will be coming in for landing as soon as we can locate the airport. Attention ladies and gentlemen, there is no need to panic. We are still searching for the airport. Uh, I have the map out. Uh, we have spilled soda all over it, but we can still make out the town. Uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning to experience some turbulence now. Please, please stay in your seats. Dude, you're going too fast, man. We're heading for the town. You're gonna run us right into Main Street. Oh, would you relax? It's cool. Woo! Ah, woo! Slow down, man. We're heading right for Basement City. We're gonna kill somebody. <laughs> Hello? Dude, man. Dude. You're on the phone, and you're driving. Right? No, I said, no, I said four pieces. Hey, I said four, no. Keep your eyes on the road. Three pepperoni, one so You know, I'll just text you it, and I'll send you a picture text. What, man? Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, dude. You know I'm allergic to Canadian bacon. Mm -hmm. Dude, look at the boy. Mm -hmm. Pull up, Captain. Look at the scene. It's devastation. Okay, so tell us what we got here down in Basement City. Well, we have three cars piled up on top of each other in the main intersection of the city. The officer's coming. He needs to know the story. He needs to know what's happened. And uh, he needs to find some witnesses of the scene. So what do we got? Well, here's our little officer. Yep. Okay. Little officer. And we have three guy or our four guys that were doing their daily activities. We have uh, Matt Mark who was going on a stroll, Matthew who was at McDonald's, um, and two other uh, John and um, Luke. Luke. Okay, all right. Okay, so now the investigating officer has to do what? Basically, has to talk to him, interview him, kind of. Okay, let's get them all together. Let's get him over here, and they're gonna uh, have to have a little confab, maybe on the roof of the parking garage. I don't know. Where's a good safe spot? You tell me. What do you like? Yeah, maybe up there. I like that. That's nice. Come in. They're down here. Okay, so he's got to get down the information. What did they see? What happened? Right? They're all kind of meeting right now, talking okay. about what happened. He's the one that called nine one one. Okay. He's got his little phone there. So the the responding officer is writing down what each of them saw. Right. If they would they in reality do it this way, what's the danger of everybody getting together and telling what happened? Right now, if they're talking uh, it over, is this a bad idea? Story. Yeah, there'd be a mm. lot of stories happening at one time. And would it influence each other if someone yes. said, "Well, oh, so so then the reality we need to separate them." Separate. So separate them. Okay. Give us just just Matthew. Matthew. Give us just Matthew, all right? Matthew's there we go. We're back. Right he's now. out. You know, he's being. He's talking to the police. He's officer. getting it written down. Okay, what did you see? Now Matthew is his own person, so he has his own observations his own and what he was doing, right? And he tells he saw about this car crash over here, because his angle was different. 
than the others, right. right? He was taking a stroll by the bank. Hmm. So he saw who was at fault, who, what happened is going to be different. Exactly. And so on and so forth. And so we could do this with all of them. You could trade out. Now he interviews, you know, the next person. Luke. Yeah. Okay. And there's Luke. Okay. And we're in on him. And tell, well, here's what happened. Here's what I saw. Yeah. There you go. And so forth and so on, right? Exactly. So now, if we said uh, later in court, okay, we're this, we've got a, you know, your insurance claims, right? Everybody's suing everybody, right? <laughs> Right? That's what happens, right? What happens. Okay. So insurance court, uh, then um, what is the uh, what is the jury going to be trying to figure out? You know? Four different accounts. Whose fault it is. Whose fault. Who's at fault? Yeah. yeah, like what happened? Whose fault? Some of the play, you know? And uh, if all the stories, as we said, are exactly alike, it might sound a little suspicious, almost rehearsed. Mm -hmm. But if they all have their own spin, there's an authenticity to it. And uh, it's probably a little more trustworthy, right? right? A little more right. trustworthy, uh, even though they each have differing things that they highlight with their own different personalities. Yeah, I mean, they're not even all guys, you know, from internally, like some guys are, uh, some of the witnesses are from external camps, you know, guys who aren't even following Jesus, oh, okay. uh, so they can, you know, vouch that. You know, so, and, and that's really strong. When you get someone talking about Jesus, like uh, some historians, mm -hmm. like, uh... Yeah, Tacitus mentions him, Josephus. Okay. Yeah. And them referring to this person who they have nothing to gain, but they're just... As if, matter of right. fact, that adds a lot of that adds a lot of strength to mm -hmm. the reason for, for us feeling comfortable. What else you got there on your list? Yeah, uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, so we have the, the early accounts. You know, they're widely established. Mm -hmm. um, but then, talking about the disciples uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, their lives are really interesting. Just the transformation that we see uh, from when they're kind of bumbling idiots to uh, when they. Uh, kind of come to their own after uh, after the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. um, you know, fills them. And we got to go really the book of Acts mm -hmm. goes on and, and that's either Luke or Luke's helper writer. That's kind of the sequel, if you will, to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Like what happened? And he says, in my former book, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. And then it says, after suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave, I love this, many convincing proofs that he was alive. Back to that resurrection. And then he talks about you're going to receive power and and what's going to happen. Holy Spirit comes on him. And then we have this whole beginning of these followers who are even willing to be persecuted. And um, Stephen was the first uh, official martyr, the first person to actually die for believing and following this Christ. Yeah, it seems uh, just very unlikely that you're going to fabricate this story uh, considering the persecution that... Uh, came of it, you know. Um, like, let's make up a story that has everybody hating us and wanting to kill us. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't sound like a good idea. I got a quote right here. Um, it says, "Consequently, to get rid of the report of the fire, uh, when uh, Nero managed to burn down Rome, uh, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on the class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace." Uh, and so the quote just goes on to describe what year. What year Nero's word was Nero in power? Um, I believe this was around the 60s. Okay. Yeah. This is mid 60s, 80s. Yeah. 60s. Yes. yes. Yeah. A little yeah. less love. Yeah, probably. that's right. So, More why fun. not blame this little, at that time, considered a cult, like a mm -hmm. small little yeah. weird, un they weren't Jews, they, mm -hmm. even though they had been, they were Jewish, but they were following this allegedly at that point, from their view, allegedly, you know, mm -hmm. teacher who was the Messiah who was dead and resurrected and is no longer around. Yeah. So it was kind of, I mean, it's, what do they do with that? But they were definitely outcasts and not liked. Right. And they do some strange things. If uh, if they're just, if they're only a little uh, Jewish cult uh, that's, you know, twisting the words of their teacher, uh, they do some really peculiar things. Um, like they, what kind of peculiar? Well, you know, they, uh, they change uh, what day the Sabbath is celebrated uh, to Sunday. Okay. Um, they they mess with the law, uh, kosher, 
is no longer, you know, okay. the thing to do. Those dietary laws and right. restrictions. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. They didn't get rid of the Ten Commandments, though, did they? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Those are all pal. Yep. So. Okay. That's excellent. Um, any other things you can think of that kind of give us? Uh, we know that they're the manuscripts, yep. and we're going to go to uh, we're going to go over here to our chart in just a second and take a look okay. at that. the um, the number of manuscripts. Mm -hmm. Right, give us reason to have confidence. Yeah. Um, yeah and we talked about how each of the different uh, four different Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John each have different personalities and background. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, Matthew with a Jewish background, bringing the flavor. I talk a lot about Messiah. Yeah. Lots of references to the Old Testament, how he's the fulfilling. Uh, Mark, the earliest gospel, really mm -hmm. heavily on the really the last Ish. week. Yeah. Uh, the crucifixion. Um, this is rapid. Yeah. You know, Luke. Bringing an orderly account sequential mm -hmm. later says, I wanted to put this. Yeah, Greco Roman biography. There, there you is. go. See, there it is. Beautiful. And John just having this passionate heart saying, You got to understand that in all of this, this was so that you might believe. I got to tell you, as I tell yeah. you, that you would believe. And you know what's interesting is a lot of people say, get very upset that the Bible as a whole, and specifically the Gospels and New Testament, will not tell them everything they want to know. Mm -hmm. Well, what did Adam have a belly button? You know, well, you know, what size rock did, you know, Cain hit his brother with? We all these kids. Yeah, we wonder, you know. Um, and so there's this, there's a sense that because it's not comprehensive, you know, what about the dinosaurs and what about this? That therefore, mm. ah, I can't buy any of it. And that's, a, that's, that's bad logic. It does mm. not necessarily follow just because something is not fully comprehensive and here's what the Bible says, the book of John, talked about just Jesus alone, he said, we know his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well, besides what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and the apostles wrote down. If every one of them were written down, I suppose even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Now, it's kind of an overstatement, but the basic idea is he lived about 33 years on this earth, taught for three, we don't know what happened to childhood, but a lot, he lived a life, and, and there were a lot of other things, but... Uh, We've got what I'll use a new word, sufficient. It's enough. It's not comprehensive, but it is sufficient mm -hmm. for people to hear the good news and be saved. And that right there is is really the heart of understanding. And it is frustrating because you go like, I wish you would have said some more or mm -hmm. that we could have walked with them. And but we've been given apparently this Old Testament and New Testament uh, account. God has given us. Uh, is sufficient and enough for us to be saved and follow him and then we have to muddy through the rest of it so until next time enjoy Matthew Mark Luke and John thank you for being here Andy thank you all right thank you. beautiful and the basement boys are out Ha 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 ha!